Hello, I'm Jenna. Today I'm going to be doing a review on an RPG called In the Light of a Setting Sun. This is made by Savad's Sanctum. I was given a copy of this game to just check out, see what I thought about it, you know, did I like the game? So I thought, sure, got my PDF, read through it, and it's pretty light. It's only maybe 40-some pages, so not bad. It's pretty light on rules for a game. And the setting is a Western setting, you know, like Wild West, um, with like cow pokes, you know, cowboys and that sort of thing. So pretty cool. So I was, as I was reading through the rules, I noticed it was similar to another rule system called Into the Odd or Karen. So it's that kind of, you know, light, old school style rule system. And I love that sort of system. You know, it's very flexible, straightforward, easy to do. And I think it really makes sense and fits with the Western theme. I think that that flexibility really fits. So, cool. So, I made a character. Quick, easy, simple. That kind of system has that. And there are only a few attributes. Um, there's iron... Reflex, Wits, and Luck. So that was it. That's all they had. And this uses a d20 to roll, um, equal or less than. So pretty easy. Also, you'll roll for background, uh, you know, what they're going to look like, age, that sort of thing. And also your starter gear. So what do you get? Roll for that. Or you can pick it, you know, up to you. Personally, I prefer to roll, you know, a little bit more random and kind of just deal with what you got. You know, I think that's pretty easy. Probably takes five minutes. Honestly, pretty simple to get that all set. And once you have picked your equipment, then you can either, they have like a, a list. So you can look on there. There's different, you know, cost, size, profits, things like that. So pretty straightforward. And I really like that they put if it's light or a heavy weapon with different symbols. So it kind of lets you pick and match what your character is. Um, it still has mechanics and everything, um, you know, whether it's light or, you know, standard, but things can look different depending on your preference. So I think that's nice that again, it has that flexibility. So when you really get down to the rules, I would say, again, pretty simple and straightforward. Again, iron, reflexes, and wits. Those are the main attributes. So the person that's running it is called a judge. And they will let you know if you need to roll against that, see your number. And again, you roll a d20, um, equal to or less than. So pretty simple. Sometimes there's advantages or disadvantages, and that's when you roll two. If you get an advantage, that means good. If it's a disadvantage, you know, then it's worse. Pretty simple. Very, you know, standard, kind of common sense. One thing that I really liked about these rules is uh, the buy and trade is pretty balanced. Because it's Western, yes, there is money and you can buy things, but at the same time, money wasn't as common and you're not wealthy, so it gives you the option to do trades or to, like, barter. Um, you know, if you have money, great, you can use it. But if not, you could, you know, uh, barter with them, give them services. You guys can, you know, make agreements, that sort of thing, which I think really fits that setting and that time. One thing I thought that was really interesting is they had search for a secret. So a pretty interesting perspective. You can, you know search a room, uh, if there's something hidden, and the judge can let you know, oh, you can roll, you know, a d10, 
a 2d tens and try to get equal or lesser and you can use luck really luck is the fourth attribute but it's more like used sparingly in certain situations so one example of something you could use luck for which i thought was really nice is an example where let's say you threw you failed and you know sometimes you're lucky sometimes you're not but it's really nice uh, it's a nice way to apply luck one thing that I liked is there's alcohol and poison, which, again, makes sense. There's, a, like, a chart, a sample at the bottom of your tolerance of alcohol or poison. Again, it depends on iron, which makes sense. The more iron you have, the more sturdy you are, the more tolerance you can handle. So if you look on there, you know, you might have, like, nothing. You don't have to accept anything. And then you can hit like one, two, or three, and that's how many d6s you roll. And then you have to accept whatever damage you roll. And then a d means drunk or dead. At first it was a little bit confused. I have to admit I wasn't sure which the d symbol meant. But then after a while, okay, if you drink alcohol, d means drunk. If you get poison, then the D would mean dead. So I was like, okay, that makes sense. But if you're drinking a lot of alcohol, then you could die. So I'm not sure where that line is. I guess it's kind of up to the judge to make that decision and, you know, where that would fit. So that was one thing that was kind of interesting. So you can just follow that uh, chart, which is really nice. And then there's combat, of course, westerns. <laughs> of course, there's going to be, you know, cowboys, that sort of thing. And those people, you know, have shootouts and all that sort of stuff. So that's pretty cool. Of course, it's not every single encounter you're going to have a shootout. But if it does happen... One thing that I thought was interesting is they utilize a deck of playing cards. So each person takes a card. They each get one. And then somebody takes all the cards that they picked. And then there's an end of the round card as well you put in. Shuffle them all. And then that's your turn. Each card is somebody's turn. If it hits the end of the round card, then you take them all, shuffle them again, start over, and deal them out. That really actually reminded me of Troika and their native system that they use with tokens. So in this sense, they're using cards, but a similar concept. So I thought that was really cool and kind of a nice way to add a little bit of a unpredictive element in each round instead of just rolling, you know, native each time and then kind of having the same thing over and over again. I thought the cards just added something about, hey, it just depends on what you pick each round. So that was really nice to see. So once you've rolled for damage or defense, and the judge does not roll for enemy. It's all on the player side. So that's, yeah, that's more of the into the odd sort of style, which is great. So everything's on the player's end. If you have a successful throw and hit, then, you know, you don't have damage. But really, it's more exploring which means if you roll and you hit the max value of that dice, for example, a d6, I got a 6. That means I've hit the max. That means I get to roll again and keep adding on. And it seems that there is no limit. If you get 6 repeatedly, you can just keep adding on. So that's where damage can be unpredictable. You could just, you know, end up exploring more damage. So... Again, if you fail, then I have the opportunity to defend and so forth. So pretty simple, straightforward. And then, of course, there is injury with your table, and it depends on location. What's interesting is with one round, your luck can go way down, like more than half, which, you know, you might be really strong or might have a really huge blow and your luck goes way down, and that's where you're going to have to roll for injury and then accept whatever you get, uh, whatever result comes up. So 
that can cause a disadvantage um, with your roll. And then it just explains how you can recover in various ways. You know, you can rest, just things that make sense. One rule that I really like and thought was cool is they have what's called ricochet. You know, sometimes when you shoot and it ricochets around, I thought that was a really cool aspect, but it's really hard to pull off. It says if you roll a 20, like a natural 20, uh, and it's on a hit, then that means that you had a ricochet. And I thought that was a pretty cool thing to add in, kind of interesting. It said if you shoot and hit the 20 the first time, then the next time you can do 19 or 20, meaning you get better at it with the ricochet. So I thought that was kind of an interesting rule. You know, uh, it's kind of rare that that happens, but makes sense and is interesting. So the next part is all about renown. So interesting concept. It's almost like your reputation and how people look at you, um, you can use that to either be an advantage or a disadvantage. It depends on the situation. So before you roll as a save, if you feel like you want to use your reputation to change that situation, then the judge can allow you to do that. And you have to do a roll before you save. And you roll, and then whatever the result is, that number you will take that and add that to your save. So if it's a successful save, then you would get an achievement of what you what you want to do. One part that I really liked is there's a rule related to bounties. Again, makes sense. But this one, I'm not sure if it was intentional or a typo because it was talking about you have to use a renown roll times by $100 and that would be the bounty set on you. But it said a D20, that would mean no one knows you, like you're a nothing. But if it's a D4 renown, then that means you're very dangerous, you know, untouchable sort of thing. And then it said, if it's a D8 or above, that means people don't want to chase after you. Only a few people would be crazy enough to do that. And that kind of conflicts with logic because it should be the opposite of a d4 meaning you're a nothing and a d20 is whoa you're you know crazy dangerous so I think that might have been a typo but I, I could be wrong here so of course it has rule for duels that's a huge part of westerns you know go to showdown high noon sort of situation everybody staring and then have a shootout so of course they have to have that of course so it was really nice to see how that worked. They used a renown reaction, used a reflex for the shootout, and then obviously you get the result from that. There's a whole thing explaining that. So it was really good to see. I think that was really important to have, so it was great to see that. Another part is opponents. Obviously this is for the judge to roll and make an NPC for that, and then the players can go against them. So it just kind of explains how that works um, with cover, iron, um, just kind of being more creative for balance purposes. So good to see. I like the part where I was talking about how to convert for OSR, old school uh, rules. So it was nice to see that because it's important. You know, sometimes it's very, you know, kind of equal with old school so it was nice to have that conversion. If you saw something and you wanted to apply that to this game, then you could see how that works with hit die and stuff like that. So I think that really transferred to iron and kind of figured out how that worked. So again, it was nice to just have that there ready to use and you can convert if you needed to. So nice to see that. The next part was a short adventure that you could use in the setting called the Tapello Two-Step. Uh, just one thing that they already had that you could use. And it seemed that there's a situation as you were in jail and you escape and then you see what happens after you escape. You know, what do you do? How do you survive? Uh, you know, once you escape from prison. So kind of a cool concept. 
So I don't want to ruin too much because, of course, I want to avoid spoiling anything. But it does have a table for, you know, what crime you did, um, you know, what do you have on you, uh, you know, once you escape from prison, you obviously you're probably like, you know, shackled. How do you get those off? How do you escape? So there is a map for a hex that you can use, has specific locations, um, and different colors represent different environments, which is nice to have as you use the adventure. Everything's all set up and laid out really simple for you. I do really love their character sheet. I think it just matches the Western look so well, but it's just simple and easy to use. I like that it has specific positions for everything, and I like that it has like the revolver image in the middle. I think that was really cool and, you know, good for the attributes. So I like that a lot. And I really appreciated the thematic design. Just fit really well. So I like that. So I think overall, this is a really fun game to play if you really want to have like a Western style, light rule, old school style RPG. This is great. Again, rules are really straightforward. It does have a few nuances I'm not sure about. It's a little bit vague. Um, I might have to try to ask someone just to make sure these are right. But again, just a few things. It's really not going to impact too much overall. I think this would be really fun to play. I'm really looking forward to trying this out with my group. I can't wait to see how it works out. I, I don't think you can go wrong with this. You know, if you're looking for a Western game, definitely check this out. So if you like this video, click like, follow me. You can follow me on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all of the socials. If you want to support me in a different way, I always appreciate a tip. You can use Ko-Fi or buy me a coffee. Either one would be good and any amount is great. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much for that. You know that I love coffee. I gotta have my coffee. Also, I have a newsletter. If you want to subscribe to that, you can do so. It's through Substack. So I send those out weekly. And it will include a video release. If you subscribe, you can watch videos early before anyone else does. So that's a nice perk. And it just has a lot of different thoughts, you know, different topics related to being a GM, RPG. Um, sometimes I do unboxing photos. Um, I've done that sometimes. Sometimes I'll put just, you know, different things that I've gotten that week, different games. So all sorts of stuff. So if you look forward to something like that, go ahead and subscribe.